shit. Here we go again. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a new offering from QSP called the Canary Folder. Now this, as I understand it, is a continuation of a line that was already going, but were only offered in fixed blades before. I think there was a small fixed blade, like a neck knife, something like that. Not entirely too familiar, just because I had never gotten my hands on one. This one though, I did, and I gotta tell you, for a ridiculous price of 42 bucks, this is a nice little knife. And this is something that QSP does very, very well. They're able to make very, very, very inexpensive knives that would blow your mind if you were playing with it and somebody said, yeah, that was 40 bucks, or 30 bucks, or 50 bucks. Like some of the prices they do are just crazy. Now, in all fairness, this is not obviously the only budget-minded type folder that's out there. I mean, there's there's a whole slew of knives made by uh, Civivi, which is a subdivision of Wii Knife. But unlike Wii, I'm not really a big Civivi fan. There have been a couple that I've enjoyed, but they weren't anything, you know, super awesome and amazing. There is something, however, about the Canary that I really enjoy. Now, again, this is not going to be a showstopper of a knife. This is not going to be something that you're going to get in your hand and immediately go, oh, wow, man, this thing is super insane and crazy cool. What it is, though, is a good practical EDC knife, something that you're going to actually use. You're going to knock around. You're going to cut stuff with. Maybe it's going to be your truck knife, the knife that you keep in the glove box or center console in your car. And you're not really too worried about damage or breakage or loss because you don't have a lot invested in it. And while the sacred halls of Walmart certainly do have a lot of knives that would fit that description, they're generally not all that nice. At least with this, you've got a nice shape. You've got good ergonomics. You've got a pretty darn nice action, especially given the price. And who doesn't love Toxic Green? I'm a big, big fan of Toxic Green myself. Now, there are a number of different variations and, and colors that are going to be available in the Canary. But I liked the green. I'm a green kind of guy sometimes on certain things. And I thought it was pretty darn cool. So let's take a quick look at this. I'm really going to dispense with my typical formula for the reviews. I'm not going to take the time to do the TLDW and the pros and the cons. I'm just going to give you my straightforward thoughts on this because, again, it's not a very expensive knife. So you probably don't need a, a, a tremendous amount of opinion and information on it. It's just a cool little small size folder. And that's pretty much it. Now, let's go ahead and get into that. We'll start things off with the specs. And this might end up being the most important section for most people, because as I've mentioned for years, there are a lot of states that are restrictive on the blade length that you can carry, how you can carry a knife, things like that. You know, they'll have one blade length for if you're carrying it in your pocket like this would be, or maybe it's unlimited if it's not concealed in any way. There's all kinds of different laws. Well, with this one, you've got a small little 2.84 inch blade. So as far as I know, any state that legally allows you to have folding knives, this should fit within because the, the smallest blade length I've seen on a folder, a law for a folder, uh, is three inches. And this puts you well beneath that. So I think you're going to be just fine. So you're looking at 14C28N for the blade steel. They've done a nice black wash on this particular variation. It is a liner lock folder set up in G10 with steel liners. So 
Obviously there is your liner lock right there. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. Bingo, there's the lock. And the G10 is over these blackened steel liners. So you've got the speed holes, that's always important. I don't know if it's really important, but uh, it's, it's a nice uh, design visually for a lot of people. I think a lot of people like the look of speed holes. It does come with a lot, a lot of oil around that bearing pivot. So that's one of the annoyances of getting knives from overseas is that you're probably going to have to spend a lot of time getting the excess oil out of the pivot areas. And that's something I didn't bother to do before the review, unfortunately. I wiped it down and I thought that would be good enough, but oh no, it came sneaking right back out. There is the flat-faced QSP captive pivot with the adjustment on the other side. Looks like it's probably going to be T6. I'm not entirely too certain, but it looks like it's probably T6. And you have a reversible pocket clip with a filler tab. So it's not just the fact that your clip is reversible, but the side that won't have a clip, you have the filler tab to keep it from looking too terribly ugly. The weight on this thing, I think, is going to be what attracts most people because being small, you're generally going to want lightweight. You don't want a small, chunky, heavy knife because it just kind of defeats the purpose of having such a small knife. Uh, you're looking at about 2.64 or 2.65 ounces. So it's going to be really super lightweight. If they had made this entire thing out of titanium, you probably would have added at least an ounce to an ounce and a half to that. But being done in G10 and having holes all, all through the G10, removing a lot of material, makes this very lightweight and it's going to be easy for most people to carry. This would also make a really nice uh, backpack knife. So a lot of people, whether it's your bug out bag or maybe it's your, your weekend hiking bag, you're probably going to have a few different knives. It's always recommended to have a good fixed blade knife in there. And if you're going to have any folders, you're going to want something that's going to be lightweight. And you want something that's going to be up for any type of cutting tasks that may come your way while you're out in wherever it is that you're at. And with the 14C28N, while it's not an exotic steel or a super steel, uh, it is a competent steel. It's a good steel. It's going to hold its edge for a decent amount of time and it's really really easy to resharpen and bring that edge back and plus having the uh, the black pvd coating that's going to help it reduce corrosion issues and they did a nice black wash so you've got the black pvd that's been stone washed so it's got that flecked look and I think the black up against the green is a handsome look. It's always a combination that I like. It somehow makes the green even greener. It makes it even more vivid and more bright. Now, I think they're calling it neon green. So when you go to, to find one, whether it's on QSP's website, whether you want to buy from them directly or through a dealer, it's probably just going to say neon green. The actual technical name for this color by the manufacturers of G10, it's toxic green. So that's why I was using that terminology earlier and not saying neon green. Another thing I think people are going to like is the fact that the bearings that are being used in the pivot are ceramic bearings. So that means that's, that's just more, strike that, that's less to worry about because all of the balls in there are anti-corrosive. You don't have to worry about them rusting if the knife gets wet. And uh, sometimes people overlook that. They'll they'll search out all these crazy, awesome steels that are very, very, very high in corrosion resistance and forget the fact that they're buying a folder that may come on bearings that could have steel bearings and a steel detent. Those, of course, could possibly rust or corrode. It's not super easy, but it is a possibility. It's something that can happen. So having the... Ceramic in there. It's also a nice thing. I would have loved to have seen this done with a titanium pocket clip, 
Normally, I would say I'd like to have seen titanium liners, but I really don't think that you would have had much of a weight savings going from the steel liners to titanium. So it probably wasn't worth the investment and worth raising the retail price for to have all that pricey titanium. But it would have been nice to see a titanium pocket clip, I think. But for most people, it's really not going to matter because it's just done in black PVD. So if it's just going to be blacked out anyway, eh, does it really matter? Eh, probably not. Maybe I'm just being a little bit nitpicky. Uh, playing with the knife a little bit, the edge is nice and bitey. It's got a little bit of tooth to it as well. I don't even know why I'm going to bother zooming in on this. It's not really... Oh, yeah, you still can see it. So you see it is a uh, eh, low to medium grit on that edge. So it's definitely going to have some toothiness to it. So it is going to cut pretty much anything that you decide to cut with it. A lot of people get hung up on... But I want these mirror polished edges. And yeah, they look cool. And they're awesome if all you're doing is slicing paper. But uh, if you're cutting rope or you know, bungee cords or twine, anything like that, you're going to want a little bit of uh, tooth to the edge so you have that sawtooth action that actually cuts and cuts cleanly. That's usually a good way to go. So all around, again, it's nothing crazy to write home about. There are no exotic materials on this knife. There are no exotic uh, fin you know, fancy finishes or anything like that. And it's not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just a good, solid EDC style knife that's on the smaller side. So whether it's going to be something you're going to carry in the summertime because you're wearing thinner, lighter weight clothing, like uh, some sort of uh, shorts instead of jeans, or you're wanting this in your backpack or something like that. The fact that it's going to be lightweight and small and thin might make it the perfect carry for you. And at that price of 42 bucks, it's kind of hard to go wrong. You can't be overly picky about a knife that's $42. As long as it's made well, it operates well, it cuts well, and it has at least somewhat decent ergonomics, which I believe this one does, then I think it's going to pretty much work for everybody looking in that price range. One thing I failed to mention that I do appreciate on this is the fact that you've got a nice sharpening choil on here with a little, little bit of room left to sharpen. Not a lot. You see the plunges, the way that they come in, they're rather shallow. They don't cut in very deep. So I think it was on this side. Yeah, on this side, it's got just the teeniest, tiniest little bit of smiley right there from the factory. So you've got one, maybe two resharpenings on it before it becomes an issue aesthetically. But overall, I think for 42 bucks, you'd be hard pressed to find anything much better. I like the design of it, nice clean lines. I like the ergonomics. The action feels pretty good. It's got a respectable, if you know, not, not uh, exotic, but respectable steel. Good materials all the way around. And at the price point, I think that they've hit exactly what they needed to hit. That's it for me, guys, on this one. It is a much shorter video here, but I do promise that it will be some really exciting videos coming in the very near future. I've got some really cool full customs that are going to deserve a lot of attention and a lot more of my time. So hopefully you guys will tune in and watch those. And until then, I'll see you on those videos.